Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2. Last time we got all the green stars in World 5, and this episode, we're getting all those green stars now in World 6. So let's make our way over to Melty Monster Galaxy and get this started, shall we? I mean, at this point, we don't have too many more green stars to go. Only two worlds left, and World S is super short when compared to the rest of the game, because there's less levels there. And even so, those levels only have two stars in it. So at that point, that means there's only two green stars per galaxy, and that's... Oh man, that's a godsend when you compare it to the rest. After a while, you just kind of want these done. Like, when you first start playing these green stars, you're excited to go back to these previous levels, and you have fun with it. It's like, yeah, let's go and explore these levels in depth. Let's find some green stars. And then just a couple galaxies in, you're like, alright, when's this gonna end? I just want to see the end of the game. Where is it? After a while, this definitely drags, that's for sure. And this is one of those pole star green stars I'm not too big of a fan of, because you gotta launch yourself to space and back with these pole stars to actually get this green star. It's pretty annoying. That space and back comment was more or less just referencing, yeah, you're definitely launching yourself very far, but half the time, when you're trying to grab that green star in particular, you gotta keep on pulling yourself back because you constantly miss that thing. There's no way to judge where you're gonna aim yourself and if you're gonna have enough distance to actually get to the green star. So it's really difficult for that reason. Also, fun little fact about this area, if you hit the floor here, the lava burns you. If you hug the lava on the wall here, you can actually see it dripping down. It doesn't do anything. Why? I don't know. It's for some reason one of those textures that was not coated as lava. It's just coated as a normal wall. But it looks like lava, so it makes no sense. Ah, uh, but here we are, and everyone's favorite galaxy to grind up star bits. This level, you'll be here for a while if you don't have max star bits in the bank already like I do. Definitely helps. I think I remember my first playthrough, I went back to that galaxy a good amount of times, like that star in particular, to grind up my star bits, like everyone else does. For good reason. There's so many star bits you can get there. You can just keep on grinding up star bits over and over and over again. And they give you so many lives there, it just, it's perfect. You can constantly go back to that level and constantly kill yourself and actually come out with like a net gain of lives so you know what you're doing. Because after a certain amount of star bits, you do get an extra life, so you'll probably end up coming out with more lives than you entered. Which works for me. Uh, but this galaxy here, for getting green stars, is kind of annoying because, you know, physics. They really don't want to work with you sometimes on these platforms, so... I'll just stand on the edge, and I think I'm safe, but let's just slide right off because, you know, Luigi has butter on his shoes. That's the only major complaint I have while playing is Luigi. He has a higher jump, and he definitely makes a lot of platforming easier in the game, but at the same time, the buttery shoes kind of thing don't help. He slides all over the place. Like one thing you'll see a lot of people doing when playing as Luigi in the Galaxy games is they'll either jump to make a complete dead stop, because that just guarantees you stop without sliding all over the place. Or they'll just constantly run around in circles, because that way they won't be sliding, but at the same time, they can't stop. I'm running around in circles just to make sure they don't fall off the edge. Not really something I like doing all too much. I'll actually just let Luigi kind of slide a bit, so I have to kind of account for that. Or I'll just jump, because I don't like him sliding too much. It makes things way easier at that point to do a jump. But this green star is kind of annoying to get because you have to ride these gears to it. And the hard thing about it is the same problem you have getting that star here in general. If you don't get on the gear at the right time, you're not going to be able to jump over and reach the green star. You'll just flat out miss it. So, yeah, not really a fan of that one. Because it's another one of those green stars where you just play the level normally. But the green star is just slightly off to the side of the normal power star. So it makes no sense at that point to have a green star there. But the green stars here in Throwback Galaxy, this is just basically playing Super Mario 64 at this point. Because some of the stuff you would kind of do to find power stars in that game. So, the green stars here are actually kind of fun to get for that reason. I like the green stars here in Throwback. Although, the first one here is kind of one of those, let's just jump down a pit and hope for the best kind of green stars. Another one of those where if you don't use the homing ground pound, you'll miss it. While at the same time, I've had the homing ground pound miss the green star and I die in the process. Never fun. 
But this one, oh man, trying to get the screen star by jumping off the thwomp, it's very picky. What I like doing is doing a wall jump off the thwomp and then immediately jumping towards the green star, but sometimes the thwomp doesn't really like to play nice with you and it makes getting that green star a lot harder for that reason. So yeah, that's definitely one of those awkward green stars to get. Not hard, just awkward, because it really depends on where the thwomp is. This green star on the other hand is one of those you might want to stop and look around with the camera kind of green stars with how far away it is. You're not going to be able to hear that shine. You have to actually see it. So it's one of those leaps of faith if you don't use the camera. Kind of annoying for that reason. But it's still one of those more imaginary stars. It's in a place where the silver stars are, just a little bit farther away. So not, it's not too bad in my opinion. I like that one. But Battle Belt. Oh, holy crap. I can go ahead and rant about this now because we're doing the same thing in Special World. But the Battle Belt and the Boss Blitz Galaxies... Oh man, these two are the worst for green stars. Literally just because of how much you have to go through to get these things. All you're doing is you're beating up enemies to get to specific areas so you can grab the green stars and that's it. In fact, green star 2 and 3 are so close to each other. Green star 3 is basically you playing through the entire level, but the only thing you do different is ignore the chain chomps. And that planetoid we were just on for green star 2 is right next to the final planetoid, so it's like, why? These green stars, oh, they're just boring. There's nothing special about these. It's just beating up baddies again for no reason. They're just boring. Those are some of my least favorite in the game. They're not very imaginary at all. They're just there. Definitely one of those moments where, oh crap, we have to put a green star in every level and we don't know where to put them moments. They're just there. Flash Black, at least I'll get more credit for it because they put a little more thought and effort here compared to that level we were just in. Ugh. That enemy rush level is just one of the worst for green stars just because of how boring it is. This one, you just have to time using the blimp fruit just right, and I like that. Whenever I can use any of those special powers with Yoshi, it's always a nice treat. Minus the glowing one, though, because I don't, I don't really like using the flashlight fruit, as I like to call it. That one is just kind of there, really. It doesn't really do much besides show hidden platforms. Not really my favorite power-up for that reason. Blimp fruit, you can go ahead and fly around for a little while there with Yoshi. The hot chili pepper, you run super quick. The flashlight fruit, you just kind of see invisible platforms. While it's necessary, it's just not as interesting as the other two. You can definitely do a lot more cool stuff with the other two. So, yeah, not my favorite. While well, we're getting there, we have two more galaxies here in this world before we're done. And... Luckily, at this point, a lot of the green stars are kind of easy since there's a lot of two green stars per galaxies coming up at this point. Which really do help break up the pace a little bit, because then you get to see more variety at that point. But this green star here is one of those definitely listen for kind of thing. So, just have to keep our eyes and ears out open. It's really hard to see a shine in this one, just because of the underwater effect. It makes it a little bit harder to see the glowing light for that reason. But this green star I actually do like just because of the fact that if you figure out where the life is here, then you already know where the green star is because there's a life right next to the green star. How convenient. This is one of those I actually remembered later because I did hear the glowing. But when I played this level for my first time, I didn't actually shake the Wii Remote right away to go through them with the launch star. And I fell through it so I can get the extra life. I remembered about that when I came back to the level hunting for the green stars. So, remembering the fact that you didn't have to launch yourself at that launch star and that gave you an extra life, that was really helpful to know just because of the fact that doing that, you get yourself a green star as well. Those are one of those moments where the game rewards you definitely for thinking outside the box, which is what the green stars are really meant to do, and that's one of those that definitely helps you with that. One of my favorite green stars just for that reason, or at least in World 6. It's one of those basic ones, but it definitely rewards you for going out of your way. And also now, when you look here at Bowser's Fortress, this is really one of those nice little moments for Luigi, because we never got to play any of the Bowser Jr. or Bowser levels with Luigi. So this is our final time getting to play through one of the Bowser levels with the character, so Luigi never really getting to fight Bowser himself, but hey, he at least gets to explore his fortress, getting us some green stars in the process. The final one's kind of simple to get, you just have to make sure you have enough clouds for it. That's really the annoying part. We had a similar star like that back in World 5, 
And those ones are annoying just because any accidental shake and you activate a cloud. I've had plenty of moments where I just barely move my hand to the right or left and it counts as a shake. So yeah, that definitely happens more often than I can count. But there you go. That's every single star here in World 6. So we have 100% yet another world and we only have one more to go. Next time on Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2, we'll get the remaining green stars in the game in the special world. I'll see you guys next time.